Vaya Cantillo, amigo. What's that mean? Go with God. You're listening to The Rock God Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Rock God Podcast, the only podcast that talks to rock and heavy metal musicians and artists about their thoughts or opinions about God. I'm your host, David Locklear, head writer, founder of heavy-vinyl.com. Today we're talking to Matt Smith of Matt Smith and the Cowboy Spankers. Matt grew up in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and at age 15 he began his musical career as part of the popular punk band subculture. As he's gotten older, he's been a part of many different bands of many different types of musical genres, such as the Infidels, the Johnsons, the Darnell Woodies, and most recently, the sludge band Lords of Mace. With a background that's as varied in musical genres as his career is, it's no surprise that his newest band, the Cowboy Spankers, is a heavy mix of murder ballads, Americana, and old school country, hearkening back to the days of Hank Williams Jr. and even legendary blues artist Robert Johnson. The lyrics and the tone of the Cowboy Spankers album is both somber and uplifting, revealing both the joy and the weariness that experience of life can bring. We talked to Matt about his spiritual background, how his dad was very supportive of his early musical choices, his brother and best friend becoming a pastor in life, being friends with the drummer of the Squirrel Nut Zippers, and the excitement of playing their very first show at the Ramcat Club in downtown Winston-Salem on Thursday, March 12th. The size of matters Well it's a thought that counts Now I'm living in fear What comes out of my mouth well, I can't hold down a job To save my ass You better look out mama Cause I'm coming down fast Is that blood on your collar Or just a lipstick stain Better finish what you started Or you wind up like a blind dog Pissing in the rain
How are you, man? Hey, Dave. What's going on, buddy? Not much. You been doing all right? Yeah, I'm hanging in there. Good. Doing the thing. How are you? Yeah, been doing pretty well. Just, you know, running around and trying to keep up with life. It seems to get busier and busier every day. How many kids you got? You got, like... You just got two, right? Yeah, just two. I uh, helped take care of a friend of mine's little boy during the afternoon, so um, I have three temporarily, but one of them goes home at five. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I get to unload one of them. <laughs> Did you get a chance to read the bio stuff I sent, or the somewhat bio? Yeah, yeah, I looked it over um, briefly, but yeah, yeah, I had no idea that you were um, in the, like a punk band in the, in the 80s oh, yeah, subculture. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did that. Did a bunch of stuff. It was. I was sending that to let you know. It's like I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> You're not recording this part, are you? Uh, actually, I am, but I'll take it out if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, how did that come about? I mean, you were what 15 when you were in in subculture, is what it what it was reading like, and that's that's pretty amazing to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, me and uh, Chris from. He ended up in Squirrel Nut Zippers and all these other bands. He's got like a platinum record, you know, fucking. But uh, <laughs> we, we grew up together, you know. And um, we grew up and um, nerdy kids, you know. And his older brother introduced us to, to punk rock, you know, like in 83, 80, no, 82, somewhere around there. And, uh, you know, I already played some guitar, had a few lessons, and, um, it, uh, we we're like, man, we can fucking do this. We can start a band, you know. So we sat there, and he, um, you know, he was going to be the singer, right? Which, you know, didn't really work too well because he's a fucking amazing drummer. <laughs> but um, so, so we did that. We like played Chuck Berry songs, and you know, did all that kind of stuff. And we we're like, we were really serious about the music, like when we were like, you know, fourteen or whatever. And we, we. I mean, it wasn't that we were, like, bigger than our britches, but we were just like, this is fun. We want to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. So he, um, uh, we started back then, like, in punk rock, everything was done, like, by actual real mail, you know? Mm -hmm. so you'd buy a record from somebody, you know, like, in California. You'd, you'd send them a letter, and, you know, you'd go back and forth. And so he sent a letter to um, one of the guys at Ugly Americans, uh, Danny Hooley, yeah. Who still he still plays a great guy. He's a teacher now, and um, uh, and he said, "Well, you know, once you guys are ready, you know, let me know, and I'll book you a show." I mean, it, it was really easy. Wow, you know, it wasn't it wasn't difficult. I was like, "Really?" You know, he's like, "Yeah, yeah okay." So we we spent some time and got you know pulled something together and um, went down there and played our first show like in Durham. You know, we're like, you know. I don't know, 14, 15. Our, our parents had to drive us, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to do that, and then we became really good friends with Reed uh, Mullen, who unfortunately, you know, recently became deceased. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we won't talk about that too much. But um, so, yeah, anyway, it just, it, it wasn't hard. It was just like it, it, you know, it wasn't this big struggle, you know, it was just like, we just kind of, you know, reached out, people reached out to us. And so we ended up trading shows and things like that. And then Reed would book, you know, gigs with us. And he was really into whatever we were doing, which, you know, I mean, I guess it was, it was pretty good. I mean, cause he liked it, mm -hmm. but um, at the time it, it just wasn't, it was real natural. It wasn't a big deal to us at the time. You know, and he said, well, do you want to come down and open for, you know, suicidal tendencies or whatever? Wow. Like, well, yeah, okay. You know, <laughs> <laughs> sure. You know, but it, yeah, yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't a big deal and it wasn't difficult. It was because nobody um, at that time was, was really, they didn't know, you know, I mean, that your average person like in Winston-Salem had no idea who these people were that we were playing with. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't think it was a big deal, you know? And we go do shows out of state with them and things like that. And nobody gave a shit. You know, it was just like people didn't, I, you know, we didn't, we didn't at the time. I mean, and it, it, it's, it's not really a big deal, but we, but and when I talk to younger people, they're like, did you really do that? It's like, yeah, they're just like friends of ours, you know, <laughs> like whoever the fuck we're playing with, you know, like, um, 
oh my god we played with the dead kennedys once wow i was, I was 15 yeah and my parents didn't have to drive us um Chris had his driver's license, so he went in there in a van and, and did the show, and it was like, there's like a thousand people, you know, and scared shitless because there's a thousand people, and, yeah, you know, I mean, it's just things like that, but the thing is, is it wasn't, it wasn't difficult, you know, mm-hmm. and it was just kind of the way things were done, right, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, then time went on, and we ended up touring and all over the place as, as kids, you know, and, um, you know, yeah, it, uh, I think it, it, it formed my life, and I, I think my view on the way, um, as far as the way that I see the world now, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. that things that may bother most people don't really bother me, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, if, you, if you've eaten, like, dry spaghetti with ketchup <laughs> in the back of a van, it's like, okay, you know, it's whatever the hell's going on here doesn't really bother us, <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, but, um, but it was cool, it was, it was a cool way to grow up, and, and, uh, you know, and, and the no FX thing, do, do, do you know who that is? Yeah. 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 Um, they, they, they did really well. We toured for about two years with them and, um, it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> it was just like, isn't that crazy? Do you like yeah. retroactively flip out like a nerd when you think about some of this shit? I would. Well, yeah, I mean, but it, it's not a nerdy thing because, like, they're friends of mine, you know, mm-hmm. and we still, you know, keep in touch a little bit, but it's like I, you know, drifted off into other things and everybody in the band did, mm-hmm. and um, I remember Mike called me Fat Mike, you know, it was just like, you know, he was Fat Mike, I, we actually named him Fat Mike, <laughs> uh, so... No, seriously, he, it's like, look in their biography, we named him Fat Mike. Good night! Um, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so, I think he called us after the second tour, and, you know, wanted to know if we wanted to go back out and do Europe. And I was at this point, I was like, I'm just not, you know, you know, I mean, I'm there, we can do it, you know. But the, mm-hmm. the, the, the funny thing is, is like, that our bass player, had a deal with his dad that he had to graduate high school before, he, <laughs> <laughs> you know, before, before he could let him go. No, uh-huh. do that. And then like punk rock broke like two years later. And after, I mean, how fucking long, you know, can I, is it okay to cuss? Oh me? yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. Free and open. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, but it was, it was, you know, it, it was, it was easy to do it but it was hard to participate in it because what it meant was that you were going to be driving all over the country, sleeping in vans, sleeping on people's floors, um, playing shows to very appreciative audiences, but there may be only 10 of them. Mm-hmm. I, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that prepared me for later on, you know, when I was playing that, um, that you, you, it doesn't matter, you know, whether you're playing in front of a thousand people or two people, if they're here, if they're there to hear some music, you play it for them. Yeah. You know, and you do your job and you give them a good show and that's what you're there for. And, you know, like mope and groan and things, which I've done that. I've, you know, went through that phase too. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, I don't know. No, it was, it was cool. I'm sorry if I'm rambling. Yeah. No, no. It It was, it was a really cool time. But no, no, it was, the whole thing was fun and it was not hard. Yeah. It was, you know, people say, well, you weren't around back then. You don't know how it was or you weren't. It's like, no, it wasn't hard. Yeah. It was really easy if you, you know, you played good and you worked on your shit and you had your shit together. It wasn't hard. Uh, But what was hard was, you know, traveling, you know, 24 hour drives or whatever the fuck, yeah. you know, to make 10 bucks. But the thing is, is it wasn't, we, we did the shows, we did our fucking job and came home. And, yeah. Uh, and it, if one looking at your bio, it sounds like that, um, the last show for subculture ended with blood and glass. Now, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Cause that's, I mean, that's a pretty punk rock way of ending things. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I mean that it, that was, kind of the era of um the skinheads now aren't like what they were back then mm-hmm. you know i mean they're kind of like 
I just shrug them off. <laughs> I mean, they're still <laughs> fucking stupid. But uh, back then, they were. There was a lot of there. There was um, violence in it, you know. And it blows my mind to like think back on it. And go as an older guy, and to go, okay, we started this like what five years after the Sex Pistols disintegrated. Mm-hmm. You know, now mm-hmm. we think about what happened five years ago. <laughs> now it's like yesterday, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> But uh, no, it wasn't. But it, it would occasionally happen or break out. But the thing is, is there were no. It was unsupervised. There were no bouncers. Mm-hmm. Um, there was not any, you know, um, you know, security except for yourself, right? Yeah. And those kind of things happened. But it was like it happened. Um, that's not. That's not why I left. It was just kind of like we did the show and um, some guys got in a fight. And somebody threw somebody into a, a a mirror or something that was on the wall, and there was blood, you know. And somebody got hurt, you know, really bad. Mm-hmm. And then people kept fighting, and we're sitting there like, "What the fuck?" You know, this is we do this amongst ourselves, you know. <laughs> we, don't, we don't we don't get down to where there's blood and cops. You know? <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, you know, it it it, it wasn't. It, if that wasn't why I left, it was one of those things where I started thinking about it. It's like, I didn't, you know, I, no, that wasn't why. I don't know. But it was just the last show. And I mean, mm-hmm. maybe it was, and I need to talk to a therapist about it. <laughs> but it, um, it was just things, things did get really weird after a certain point where there's only so much of that that you can, you know, I guess stomach like as a young kid, mm-hmm. you know, and, to to see that i mean it you know i mean everybody else it wasn't no i don't know you might we, not, we might need to edit this um but no we we got in fights too and we took care of ourselves yeah and we did what we had to do as a bunch of punk rock kids in the you know mid 80s traveling around the country and, you know going to fucking you know redneck bills and things like that and uh, you know um so it might have just kind of worn on you after a little while, you know, like the just being on the road that much and seeing that kind of shit over and over and over again just maybe gets exhausting. Maybe, maybe so. You know, and I went on the road with like later bands, but it was like the shit was tame. Mm-hmm, you're right. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, seriously, you know, it's like nobody's like going to like throw shit at us or there's not going to be any fights. And if there are, it's like, shit, I could deal with that. That's nothing. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, it was uh, it was weird. Um, one of the uh, the worst places to to get in trouble is in upstate New York. Oh, really? What did, did something? You. What happened uh, there? It happened three times. Um, we went through once. I was in No Texas band with their. I just rode with them, you know, for some reason, and the roadie was driving right. And he changed lanes and accidentally, you know, there was somebody there and they made a big deal about running off the road, you know, like, oh my God, and they pulled out in front of us and we're like, it's like, holy shit, you know, and he's like, no, it's, you know. So anyway, you know, about like three or four miles down the road, four police cars. Wow. <laughs> Good night. Swarm around us, right? I mean, yeah, we're, we're in vans that had graffiti all over them and shit, you know, just you know, <laughs> looking like the warriors, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You know, so, uh, we, you know, they pull us over and we're like, fuck, you know, and they go through both of our vans. I didn't know this was illegal at the time for him to do it. Um, or not illegal because they're cops. Everything's fucking legal. <laughs> but, um, they, they had us pull all our shit out on the side of the road our gear, everything. And they went through it and there was like four of these guys are like, you just ran his trooper off the road. And they were like, oh. we're going to find something in here. You know, I mean, just really like, well, that, that was a redneck accent. They had a New York <laughs> accent. The, the New York rednecks are the worst fucking rednecks ever. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I mean, it's true. You know, so anyway, they have us over there on the side of the road and they're like, if you have anything in here, you need to tell us right now. And we're like, I, we don't have anything. They found a police baton nightstick in the bottom of No Epex's van. And what? They found it. Yeah, yeah. We were at a party like 
after a show and there was a cop there and we we're having fun the cop was like drunk and he was like pulling his stuff out swinging it around and he apparently left it there so we just picked it up and threw it in the van oh it wouldn't you know, right? Oh, shit. See, I thought you were saying, like, they dropped one of their batons and, you know, like, planted the baton. I, no, the, no. Uh, it, was, it was a legitimate, it was a legitimate pickup, you know, that we found it and threw it in there. And um, so they were like, oh, hell, we got, it's like, oh, hell, we got you boys now, or whatever the fuck it sounds like when they say it. <laughs> and uh, so, and then they're, they're roading. I don't know why he, I mean, it, it was, he was fine. They were like, we're going to search. You got, this is all illegal shit for them to be doing. Yeah. You know? And he said, well, I've got a, a vial of alum in my pocket because he had it when his teeth was falling out. And alum's like a, uh, it, 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 it numbs. It's a numbing agent that is actually, you can buy it in stores. Yeah. It'll sort of numb sore teeth. And they grabbed it and they were like, oh, what have we here? And so they said, well, we're going to arrest two of you guys, and the rest of you guys are, you know, we're detaining you. And so Mike was like, well, it's my van, Fat fat Mike, you know. And so, Man. <laughs> so they let him in the back of a cop car, and he's wearing a fucking Daniel boot. <laughs> 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 so they, they load him in there, and they took Terry, the, the roadie, which is that his name, with the, with the supposed cocaine is what they assumed it was right so they took us in there and they held us overnight well they held them for like two days right and they said that they ran a test on it that was positive for cocaine um we don't think it happened but fat mike's mom was a lawyer like in hollywood and she cleared up the whole thing it was all bullshit and everybody shut up so oh wow that's yeah. That's the upstate New York thing. Then it happened a couple of other times when I was trying to leave New York City, and you know, I don't know. But there is, it's if if you think there's a problem in the South with cops, uh-huh. there's nothing compared to what they're like up north. No racism, shit. Racism, racism, any of that shit. They're way fucking worse up there, and they have no reason to be. <laughs> yeah, that's what's tripping me out. Because when the last time I went through uh, New York City, I remember. I, I just saw this Italian guy, and he was he, he was talking to these uh, these two obvious tourists. One of them was black, one of them was Asian, and he was trying to show them how to use one of the cards to get onto the subway. He right. got mad all of a sudden and started rattling off about the mark of uh, uh, mark of original sin. That is what uh, that's what black people are. It's like that's the mark of Eve for tempting Adam and. Like, he just lost his shit, and suddenly it's all this race thing, and they're just, you know, they're standing there kind of befuddled. And, you know, I was like, this is what the people always accuse the South of. <laughs> exactly. We were, um, I was on tour in Europe a couple of years ago, and um, one of the guys that was like a road manager, he was a Belgian. Really sweet fucking people over there, man, and really nice. And we'd talk, and he'd mention because we're from the south, you know. And he's like, you know, I just don't understand the way that you treat, you know, black people. I was like, well, we really don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's not all of us. That's a very small percentage. And so, you know, walking around the street late one night, and this, uh, I guess he was, I don't, I don't know you know what he was but he didn't have the same color skin we did right right and he comes up and he started talking to us and this guy like goes off and he goes you need to get the fuck away from it like in belgian or something i don't know what he's saying but that's what it sounded like and we we're like what the fuck was that he goes don't talk to them because all they want is your money <laughs> and i was like whoa <laughs> now hold on let's just back this up <laughs> That shit is really weird the way it works. Yeah. In the South, it's like, I, we don't, I mean, I, 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 no, I'm going to say we, yeah, it's, we don't behave like that. You know? Yeah. I mean, some people might, but the, the vast majority of us do not behave that way. Mm-hmm. And up North, there's way more of that shit. Sorry, but it's true. I've been there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think that was what startled me the most when I went up North was to see how, prevalent it was you know it just i ran into it several times and i was really surprised i was like i thought i thought this wasn't really where this happened like i don't don't see this happen this much around town you know (laughs) so it it, it just doesn't i mean and it's like 
it's this weird kind of thing. I was in Indiana um, with my ex-wife like years and years ago, and there was like these you know people driving around with Confederate flags like in the back of their pickup trucks, and I was like, dude, there's like two black people in this town, you know? It's like <laughs> bring that down south. You get your ass whipped. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this isn't cool, man. You know? and, yeah. Uh, but they, you know, I don't know, but. Anyhow, that's that. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it's funny because uh, every now, I mean, it's like if you go into the deep pockets of the country, you'll see a lot more, you know, rebel flags and whatnot. And I'm like, okay, that's just, I get it. That's what it is. You know, it's like, but when you come into the pretty populated areas, you don't really see that. You don't really get that sense. Most people are just kind of going about their business and not really worried about any kind of civil war you know pride and things of that nature it's, well i mean yeah that's true to a certain extent but the thing is it's some of the most like um i, I don't want to you know piss off you know the north the yankees but if you look at a town like new york or boston or whatever it's like i don't know maybe i should shut up but they'll <laughs> they'll hate on people like the irish people will hate on fucking like protestants or, or some kind of shit or mm. lithuanians you know they'll hate like on other fucking you know, white people or whatever. It's like, what are you, why are you doing this? You know? And in New York, it is, it's very segregated. Um, I lived in Minnesota when I was a kid, like in Minneapolis, when I was really young and I never saw a single black person Mm -hmm. because they, they were on the other side of the bridge. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. Lived in Portland as a kid, same fucking thing, you know, didn't know there was black people there because they didn't go to my school. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's just, you know, I came down here and I was born down here and raised in the South, but like, you know, I came down here and it was like, you know, this is, I don't know, it, it was different. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I'm kind of coming off as an asshole, aren't I? No. <laughs> but no, no. And then all of a sudden, you know, they, I, I lived over, way over in like the, the Western part of Winston-Salem, right? Mm-hmm. And they bust us about like an hour and a half over to East Winston. Yeah. Which for people who listen to this, you know, it's, you know, the, the wrong side of the tracks or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was, it was kind of a, you know, a different experience. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah. I had the same experience too. I mean, I lived in Clemens and, um, uh, and when I went to middle school, they bust us out to, to Kennedy, which, you know, was really right there, you know, on the edge of a really rough part of town. And a couple of my buddies lived out there and I'll never forget. We were skipping school one day and, and we were walking through their neighborhood and I wasn't worried, but I remember one of them was just like, man, okay, if you ever skip school, do not do it without us because you're going to get your ass kicked if you come out here by yourself, you know, (laughs) but it was, you know, it was that general feel of, yeah, there was a distinct line line in town where you some yeah. people went some people did not go but you know but the thing you just said though is there there was a line that some people go some people do not go but you're with friends who said you know just don't come here without us mm-hmm. so you were there was people there that were accepting of you being who you are and you're accepting of them you know but like i said about the thing in europe or you know i don't know man I'm going off on a tangent. No, nah, I mean, I, I know I, what I you get, mean. I get up, I, I get upset when people, you know, because I'm, I'm a Southerner, and I mean, I don't get upset, I don't really give a fuck, but when they think that we're all like a bunch of racist pieces of shit, or whatever, and obviously not true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've, I mean, I've talked to, a, there's actually a guy in our neighborhood, he moved down here from Brooklyn, and um he was talking about it. It took him a good year to realize that when people were saying good morning and how are you, that they didn't want anything, that they weren't trying to rip him off. <laughs> yeah, well, when you say have a good day, you know, it's like people actually kind of mean that. You yeah. Know, if somebody has a good day. Yeah. It's like, no, we're just being nice. <laughs> Yeah, he was like, no, it took me a good year to figure that out. He's like, I thought you guys were bullshitting me, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's, and people say, well, like, it's a, it's a, it's a fake polite or it's like a not sincere. And it's like, well, I would rather have that than have somebody just be a total fucking dick to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Freaking, you know, like, 
Connecticut or something. <laughs> I'm going I'm to try to go through every state and piss everybody <laughs> off that I can. Yeah. <laughs> just hit everyone. It was just like, and these guys are assholes over here in Ohio because they do. <laughs> God, yeah. No, Ohio's cool. No, I mean, every, there's, there's great people everywhere. Yeah. I mean, there really are, but it's like, you know, I mean, as far as it has to do with music, I, I, I don't know, but I think it's, it's the cool thing that's a gift about you know, being able to be a musician and being able to do that. You get to go to different places and see, like, you're not a tourist. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to a place where wherever you want those people hang out. They're coming to the club or they're coming to, did I just say the club? Yeah, I mean, they're, <laughs> you know, they're coming down to the club, you know, just to see some music and, yeah. and you're meeting, like, you know, regular people and you can talk to them and, you know, yeah, I don't know, and that's that's one of the gifts of it to me is being able to do that. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, you doing this at such an early age, um, your dad was a pastor or, or, or a preacher, and um, what did he think about you? You know, no, being involved no, in no, this. My brother. Oh, my I thought you brother. said your dad. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no my baby brother. Um, he's a, he's a preacher. Um, my dad is he's more kind of like me. Um. Well, maybe not that. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. No, my, 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 my baby brother is a preacher and um, very conservative. Um, you know, all that, but it's like, he's like my best buddy. Yeah. Know? I mean, we, you know, I mean, I'm like a, a liberal necessarily. I don't really think about it, but we'll go out and shoot. Mm-hmm, right it's like that and have a good time but there's certain things that in conversations we're like well let's maybe we'll agree to disagree yeah mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah no no my dad was cool he um somebody uh did an interview with him you know and i didn't know this at the time but this this is back in i think uh the 90s that somebody um called him to do an interview about what it was like to have you know, they were doing a story, I don't know what it was, about, like, kids, um, like, younger children, musicians or whatever, people going out and doing things that maybe it was sort of questionable for them to be at that age. And what my dad said to him was probably the greatest thing my dad's ever said to me. He said, well, the reason I did that was because he was going to go whether or not I wanted him to. Mm. And if I stayed with him and supported him and he told me where he was going to be, I'm still connected. So I went there and let him do it because he was going to anyway. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's some damn good parenting, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean, we're all best friends now, you know. Oh, that's but, awesome. Yeah. To- yeah. And so, and so when you when you talk to your brother, uh, you guys uh, obviously have some sort of a. It sounds like you have a, a spiritual conversation from time to time because you're an atheist, and I'm assuming him being a preacher, he's a Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I think I mentioned the atheist thing. And um, I don't like being an ist, but no, he. I mean, we grew up together, and I went through in the um, in the nineties. Um, I went on kind of, I guess, a spiritual quest or whatever people call it, where um, I started studying different religions and, you know, different ways of thought. It's when I quit music and started doing, you know, like other shit. But I actually went to, um, I stayed at Buddhist temple and learned about that. And it was great, man. Really mm-hmm. cool shit. Um <laughs> I went to a Sufi meeting and did the swirling thing, you know. So What's anyway, the swirling I, I, thing? I, oh, the dervishes, yeah. The dervishes? Right. I don't think I've heard of that. The the dervishes. The Sufi. Look it up, man. We ain't got time to go on. Okay. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would take a long time. Okay. No, it's, uh, Sufism is a, it's a, it's just basically sort of a, a sort of a more liberal, I guess, more spiritual um, branch of Islam. And, uh, oh, really, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Very cool stuff. And, um, so anyway, so I, I went, I just figured that I need to learn this stuff. Cause I mean, I didn't go to college. I mean, I'm, you know, dumbass. So I figured I needed to learn, you know, about mm-hmm. all these things. And so I went and did that. 
and it was uh, it was great. It's a great experience. Um, I went to mosques, you know. I just all these things. You know, I, I, mm-hmm. I did that. I mean, even like Western esotericism, and um, you know, like from Crowley to whatever Gnosticism. Um, I'm trying to think of other stuff I got into, but uh, of Vedanta and things like that. And but I tried to like actually actively participate in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and go and meet with them and practice with the practitioners. Yeah, right? and um, you know, and I came and come. I didn't. I didn't really come out of it, I guess. But it it didn't necessarily make me an atheist. But it. Um, I think it. Yeah, atheist not the right word, but it. Um, it sort of um, you know made me think that there's really not a right or wrong way to do this, mm-hmm. as long as you're just being a good person. You know, and it doesn't necessarily take a specific kind of path to make you a good person. I think what makes us a good, or what makes me, a, well, I'm not saying I'm a piece of shit, but what, <laughs> makes, <laughs> but what, what I think the good part of me is, is that being open to these different ways of thought, you know, Christianity as well, or whatever it is, and being able to look at those things from a non political way mm-hmm. and that's to me what is my, my my main problem now with the way um actually you know what i'm lying i don't really have a problem with any of this it's just like i don't i just don't understand mm-hmm. you know that why um people would you know assume that the way that they believe and things like that is right without looking at other ways of thinking because you do not know where your religion stands until you look at all the others Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and learn about them and immerse yourself in them. It's not going to send you to hell because you go to a, you know, Buddhist temple or a Hindu temple or whatever. It's just, you know, it's just knowledge you're gaining. Yeah. Yeah. So does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Because a a friend of ours, you know, she was, um, I forget exactly what type of believer in Islam she was, but, um, you know, she was Muslim, but she was very, very relaxed and very calm. And she would have a, a very, uh, intimate and, um, very soothing way, I guess is the best way to put it of talking to other people about, you know, the Abrahamic ideas and, uh, how they overlap with Judaism and Christianity and it was interesting to talk to her just because she gave me a perspective on Islam that I'd never had right. before. And it, and it did change my way of thinking. You know, it didn't change me as a Christian, but it more right. changed me as a spiritual person to understand the idea that somebody else could have a very relaxed and intimate knowledge of God that um, maybe yes. I've never been privy to before. Yes. They, well, yeah, I mean, the, um, what they call them in Islam is people of the book. Um, which are Jews, um, you know, whoever, I, you know, it's a, it, the people of the book basically means, um, they, how can I say it? Um, Muslims, I mean, you know, they, they do, they do accept Jesus, but not as a savior. And it's not really, to me, it's not really different than the way that the Jewish people look at him necessarily. They do recognize him mm-hmm. as a great teacher and a great leader, but they don't, you know, follow him. So it's like, I'm like, well, what's the big difference here? Mm-hmm. You know, is this, is this an Israel issue? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we can get deep. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> it, uh, no, no. I mean, I, 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 I am an atheist because I don't, I mean, I, I think I would qualify as one mm-hmm. because I don't feel that, um, that it's necessary, uh, for me to have, you know, any, um, how can I put it? I don't need a moral code. You know, mm-hmm. I don't need, I don't, I don't need a prescribed moral code. Right. I can make my own. And if I'm wrong, I'm going to suffer the consequences. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm not going to hell or whatever, but I'll go to prison. <laughs> <laughs> and, which is, I guess its own form. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know, man, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. Um, 
So were, did you have like a, a belief in God when you were a child and then became uh, less of a believer or is it just kind of something that's been steady all your life? No, no. Um, well, when I was a kid, I mean, I, I was very, the, my, my parents are from Georgia and we, my parents will, my dad's kind of, you know, he, we were, we were technically raised Christian and mm-hmm. he would try to get us, he'd take us to church like every once in a while, but then it was like, Oh God, what, uh, that uh, sound right (laughs) (laughs) you know and then once like we've come to the south we try to take us to different churches and then once somebody threw their hands in the air and started like whooping and hollering he was like okay we're getting out of here (laughs) um um, no yeah it uh but it's still it's not i'm really interested in it because i like um a lot of parts of the bible um I, I like the New Testament. Mm-hmm. Um, I like it a lot. I don't like a lot of the things that Paul had to say. Um, I did, you know, for instance, um, sort of that um, being uh, feeling that you need to be subservient mm-hmm. to something that you're really not sure of, to something that you may have just heard of, to somebody told you about. And I don't feel like necessarily we need to have proof that something exists or that something is real. But if there's a, a specific, um, uh, some, some, maybe some information we get, mm-hmm. you know, that is good. But the thing is, is in my mind, it's like, you're telling me like, don't just go out and kill and rob motherfuckers. If you need to tell me that <laughs> I'm a piece of shit, <laughs> you know? So, and, and I don't think, you know, if you, if we look through history and things like that, it's like people that were successful and things that it was, their good behavior was not necessarily based on any kind of spiritual beliefs mm-hmm. or Christianity or anything like that, you know, and just, I'll get weird with you. Jesus wasn't a Christian. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> he was Jewish. <laughs> yeah. He, I mean, you know, and he didn't even know that he was like. Christ, he's just like, I'm just like this dude, you know, <laughs> and I love that part of it, you know, and the thing that, like, politically, I think this to me is, um, you sort of claim the New Testament, and they, they do that, but then they also cherry pick the Old Testament to, um, you know, to sort of confirm the reason that they hate certain people, mm-hmm. and they'll go through it, and they'll pick things out, and it's like, well, we, we hate, you know, we, we can't let the, the faggots and the lesbians get married. It's like, yeah, you're not supposed to eat shellfish, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? Like, you know, it's like you're supposed to lock your woman in a closet when she's menstruating. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. And then I hear that on the other people that hate, you know, Muslims and things. They're like, well, they do this, and they do this, they're women, they do that. It's like, yeah, but y- your people did too. Mm-hmm. And... They did it maybe a thousand years earlier because Islam, uh, what was it, like 400 A.D.? Mm-hmm. Is there a four, I think it was around 400 A.D. or mm-hmm. whatever. So it, it hadn't had as much time, I guess, to sink into people. You know, I, I don't know. Yeah, whereas like Christianity, you know, we had Constantinople where it like moved for a couple of hundred years before Islam was really taking hold in certain areas of the con- or uh, in the continent and whatnot. Exactly. So maybe, you know, it, maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I just, I don't like, I think, I, I think, okay, I, I think that I, I really don't like the way that um, religion is still fear in people. Mm-hmm. And I think fear may be an impetus for people to do, um, I don't want to say evil, I don't really believe in that, but to do shitty things. Right. Because if we're afraid of something, we're going to react violently to it. And generally what we're going to be afraid of is things we don't understand. Mm -hmm. And if it's something we're confronted with something we don't understand, the only thing that, that I guess, dumbasses can do is to reach back and go, well, it says this here. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, who the fuck said that? Mm -hmm. Some dude, like, you know, that may or may not have existed. And in ninety percent of the time, it's taken completely out of context with the rest of the actual, you know, verses that are around it. You know, they get inform it on some level that generally people are go, "Oh no, 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 no! That's not what it meant at all. It meant this one thing. This one verse means this." 
It's not being right. ironic or, you know, it's not referencing anything else. It's only this one thing. And you're like, no, usually that's not the case. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not just speaking like off the cuff. I went to Catholic school. Mm-hmm. For like, so I, I, I read that shit. Right. <laughs> so I'm not just making shit up. And I, I read it like when I was on my bullshit spiritual journey too. I, I still actually, um, uh, well, I don't have a Bible in my house anymore. But uh, my apartment or my hovel, but I, uh, <laughs> I still, I still, I listen to the audiobooks of it. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's it's like a conundrum for me. You know, mm-hmm. I, um, maybe it's just I want to understand. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not going to subscribe to it, of course, but I, 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 I do want to understand it more. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe because. I don't know, but I try to... Okay, here's the other thing, too, spiritually. Maybe you'll do this. Um, I think a lot of times when I see things, like on Facebook or whatever, that's like all this hate-filled shit, mm-hmm. my my automatic response is to go... Cause, okay, here's the thing. All right, When I hear something or see something on Facebook that somebody says, okay, if it has to do with Trump or anything like that, mm-hmm. and I can go, oh... I can go look at your page, and the first thing it's going to say on there is "I'm such and such, such and such, and a child of God." <laughs> it, seriously, right? It happened to me last night, and this—it was a friend of mine posted something about, um, you know, there was some guy, uh, a sports team, I don't know, who made a shitty comment to somebody about "Go back home," you know, "Go mm. back to your country," or mm. whatever. Mm-hmm. and then my friend posted, you know like a MAGA thing about, you know, Trump saying, you know, go back home. He's like, where's this come from? And then this other person gets on there and goes, well, I think all he was saying, he goes, what's that have to do with MAGA? I think what he was saying is that these people, their countries are so messed up that they need to go take care of them before they become the greatest nation on the face of the earth and tell us what to do. And I was like, two of those women were born in the United States. (laughs) Shut up. You know, they don't. I mean, I mean, there's dumb liberals, but there's like, you know, actually, you know what? That's not true because I can tell, like, if I read any bullshit, like on Facebook or whatever, mm-hmm. I can click on it and look at that person's profile, and I can say it before I go there. I can say, you know what? I'm going to click on this, and I'll know exactly what kind of person <laughs> this is. You know, I mean, it, yeah, it says on there. I don't know him, but it, it, does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I you can. What this person's going to say. <laughs> Well, it's it's based on experience. It's like you you've been around this type of person, and so it's very easy to be like, you know what? If I was gonna bet a hundred dollars, I'm about ninety percent sure I'm gonna win that bet. You know, <laughs> yours, yours is weird though. You know, because it's like, but that's that's the thing. It's cool, you know, because like somebody's like, what the fuck? You know, this guy's like a Christian, but he's actually like listening to some shit, and he. You know, like, <laughs> like, that's what I like. You know, I mean, if somebody's going to like, you know, identify themselves as whatever, you know, mm-hmm. identify yourself as a Christian to me means that you identify with Christ, which is the New Testament. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's the New Testament. Up until the point it gets to some of the bullshit that Paul was saying. But, um, sorry. Oh, dad, that's all right. Oh, Paul's great. But it, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like. But it's our book. It's like, no, the Old Testament, it's, it's, it's not your book if you're a Christian. Right, you yeah. You say that, but I mean, is that, how would you respond to that? Yeah, if yeah, if somebody was like, you know, it, it's not, I would I would go ahead and say this, like, yeah, the, the Old Testament is far more Judaism than Christianity. Um, and, but that there, there are things in there that, I, I do believe and I appreciate and subscribe to like, you know, the, uh, the like Proverbs and uh, the Psalms, you know, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're, they're very good for, you know, when you're, when you're spiritually growing and you're becoming less rule oriented and more like I, the way I put it is like, you know, kind of like God or Christ oriented where you're not so much bound by a set of laws there's a lot of really good stuff in there, but a lot of those laws are where people, I think, uh, at least like new believers and whatnot, kind of have to start from. It's almost like you need the structure in order to grow. Um, almost like going from kindergarten 
on, which I hope nobody takes that in the wrong way. I'm not calling like Judaism kindergarten. <laughs> so let me no, no, let, I, throw that down as a uh, disclaimer. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I totally get that. Uh, you know, the thing too is, is that, um, no, those are great, you know, songs, proverbs. Um, I can't think of anything right now, but, but those are great. But the thing is, is that a lot of, uh, liberal, oh, I don't want to say liberal, it's fucking pigeonholing somebody, but a mm-hmm. lot of, a lot of people, will take out things still bit in Leviticus or Deuteronomy mm-hmm. to basically discredit anything a Christian has to say, mm-hmm. you know, and I mean, they, they do have a good point, mm-hmm. but like, <laughs> you know, the thing is like, if you're a Christian, it's like, why don't somehow, um, I'm asking you this question, you know, mm-hmm. real. it's like, why don't, you know, I mean, that is some good stuff they had in there, but there's also great stuff in, you know, the Quran, the, you know, the Vedas mm-hmm. or, you know, the, the Buddha Sutras that are also great. But why would, what what's the connection between what Jesus said and what, you know, what was said in books like Leviticus? And it's, they're, they're, it's two different things. How, how do you explain that? Like, how do I reconcile it? Well, how do you reconcile, yeah, reconcile it? Yeah, I think with me, um, part of it is that, uh, I look at uh, historically the lineage of where Christ came from does add up over time. Yeah. So it is almost like a family tree type of mentality where if you look back, this is what it led to. And I and I do feel like it is historically accurate that um, if you go through the generations, it does lead to Christ as being... Uh, the one that was predicted as being the Messiah. So yeah. that is the connection for me. And not only that, but I mean, I, I do, I, I, I honestly love the stories. Uh, I think Judges is probably my favorite book in the Bible. And the reason being is because there's a lot of ass kicking in it, to be frank. And, you know, <laughs> there's there there are beheadings and, you know, people getting killed with the, you know, jawbone of a donkey, is, you know. So anti-Jesus. Right, you know, I know. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, no, I get what you're saying, but it's like, I mean, there is that, there is that history that that runs through the entire thing. But it's like he, the way, the way that I always saw it was Jesus, um, when he came about, and when he destroyed the temple, you know, did all these things. I mean, yeah, he did kind of fuck it up. But it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like he goes, "No, this is bullshit. Yeah. This is the way it is now." Mm-hmm. And so it's like I don't know. I just I, I think it's just too identically or not too. Uh, let me say it again. It's it's two completely different books and way to look at things. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, they're very distinct from each other. When you read it cover to cover, you definitely get a sense of one is very different from the other. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I don't know. How do you, but the thing is, like, how do you reconcile that between like other religions where you know, like, Buddhism is like pretty much solid through start to finish? Mm-hmm. It's basically that's what it is. And regardless of what people think, Buddha was not a god. He never mm-hmm. acknowledged that he was any kind of supreme or divine being. He never mentioned it mm-hmm. being a god. And people are like saying that you're worshiping. So I was like, no, no, you're not. He's not a god. Mm-hmm. Nobody ever even thinks about that yeah um, so and a lot of people one of you know when i was studying buddhism the i think a lot of people misunderstand what buddhism is actually aiming for you know the idea that you want to it's it, this is a crass way of putting it but it's basically like you want to be the mellowest motherfucker on the planet that's what you're going for. You're trying to basically remove anything that is going to distract you from complete and totally in total inner peace. Yeah. That, that's yeah. And, and right. I, and I think that is, I actually completely love that. I think that's, and I think the reason being is because my day every day is very stressful for me. And so I like the idea that there was at least, there's at least one religion out there that's like, no man, you can mellow out. It'll be all right. <laughs> you know, no, it will. It will. And, and I don't think there's that that much difference in what. Well, I mean, maybe there is because Buddha never attributed anything to a father figure. Mm-hmm. 
um, or anything like that. But I think they were basically saying very similar things. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, um, I mean, what, what, what I got from Buddhism was that Mm -hmm. it is true. Our attachments are what causes us pain Mm -hmm. and they're what, um, you know, leads us away from, um, maybe leading a, a happy life. I, I mean, I don't know what even that means because some people are happy in their misery. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, I don't know, man. Yeah. Yeah. I guess there are some people who are going to be happy in their victimhood. And so, you know, anything that brings genuine pleasure is going to, you know, kind of wreck that on some level. They, well, it, I mean, isn't that a part though of, um, what, these people may believe in like Christianity that bearing this burden and this cross and, you know, mm-hmm. all this stuff. And they, you know, and they take that on to believe that it's, you know, it's just what they're supposed to do is to suffer and go through it and yeah, you know, save them. Yeah. And that drives me crazy because it's like the, the whole, the whole point of Christ on the cross is supposed to be the removal of that burden. Right, right. You know, and so it's like, why? So I don't understand what the role of suffering is supposed to play. I mean, it's like, now I subscribe to the idea of struggling means that you are going to probably learn and that it's a Which good is teaching what tool. God actually means is str- Okay, anyway, we'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, no, no, I, I, that, that makes sense. Keep, keep, keep doing what you're saying. I keep saying what you're saying. Well, yeah, yeah. And it's just that I, I, I don't. One of the things that I have a hard time with, because I also, I, I kind of struggled with this growing up, was the idea that, you know, you, you suffer through this life in order to reach, you know, eternal happiness. But then when you really start reading the teachings of Christ and you really start diving into the scriptures, it you know, the idea was that you weren't supposed to do that. It was that that was taken from you so you wouldn't have to suffer. So you wouldn't have to worry about pain and suffering and all this kind of nonsense. But uh, people really, it's yeah, it comes back to the victimhood thing. People really want to hold on to that for whatever reason because I guess they feel like they need to be punished or they need to suffer. And I, I guess it's it's hard for me to understand that anymore. Yeah, yeah. It. I, th- I think what 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 it may do is it like um, it. I, I think if people are right to sort of. Um, neglect their responsibilities and neglect their um i'm confusing myself um to sort of you know like bypass their own shitty behavior mm-hmm. and they act shitty and they do shitty things and bad things happen because of those things which they don't recognize that and then they will attribute it to the fact that jesus was okay with suffering and it's just a cross that they bear mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, yeah, oh, that's uh, not what he meant to do. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 I agree. I, yeah, you know, I don't know, man. Um, yeah, these conversations always fascinate me as far as, you know, um, I don't know, man. It, it um, When I was in Catholic school, this, um, I was just, I, I didn't, I was, you know, little asshole was the reason they sent me there. But, um. <laughs> I was in a, you know, one of the Bible, the religious class where we read the Bible the whole time. And, um, I like made a joke about mother Teresa that I saw on the Paul Hogan show. Does anybody still know who Paul Hogan is? I don't know. I mean, I do, but I don't know if anybody else does anymore, which is a shame. Yeah. 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 And I made some kind of joke about, yeah, I saw him. Paul. He grabbed me. It's Catholic school. Of course. Yeah. He grabbed me like by my tie. Cause I had to wear a tie. And he picked me up and slammed me into the chalkboard in front of everybody and said, you know, you are going to meet the proverbial dead end. Oh, man. Yeah. And uh, I was like, wow. um, Thanks, man. My first (laughs) thought was like, I'm going to beat your ass. Right. So I waited for him outside the classroom to beat his ass. And other teachers got involved and things and it, I, I, I don't know, you know, but, but that kind of thinking, that's not something you would ever hear from a monk, a Buddhist monk. Right. Yeah. And that, that kind of re- response would just never happen. But then again, no, that wouldn't even be an option in Buddhist culture is to 
require that you listen to them. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, as far as I can tell from research I've done recently, it's, it's like, that's not any kind of qualification, but the thing that's fucked up, man, um, that stuff that's going, is, is it, uh, is it Myanmar where the Buddhists have actually taken up arms? Oh, Um, I don't know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure. It's like, there's like Buddhists running around with guns. Like yeah. The to the world. Yeah. You know. That yeah, that's when you know things have gone sideways, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like oh, shit, Buddhist people have gone. Like, oh, uh-uh. <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> yeah, there, there there are there's there's like Buddhist people. I mean like, yeah, I mean it's it was I don't say it was on the news, so it's real, but it it apparently that's what happened over there is that Buddhists actually a lot of them did um, and it wasn't just the, the, the lay people. It was actually like monks and things like that just kind of went for it. And, you know, wow. they, they cleared leather and shot. You know? Man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like something out of a like a, a weird Western, you know, that is like, yeah, Gandhi too. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. So, you know, I, I don't know, man, how to like – I know, but yeah, but the thing is too, though, is I, I think a lot of this, like, as far as like music stuff goes, mm-hmm. when we go back to that, is as far as like trying to write songs or to communicate in some way, like through music, it, there's always this thing where um, you're saying shit that you don't know if it's true or not. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it's like you're telling your story, and I like to think that all my music or all my songs are like real. But a lot of it is it's a meditation. You know, mm-hmm. if I'm writing something, I'm trying to work through it and I'll keep working through it. I'll like revise shit, you know, over and over and over again because I'm trying to tell my truth. Yeah. You know, and even if it's not happy or it's painful or whatever, it's just trying to tell our, our truth. Mm-hmm. Our truth. And, um, you know, I, but I, I think that may have been something that I got from, um, like spiritual studies or whatever religion. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the, the other what? thing too, that dude is in the South. I'm, I, you need to talk more, but, but wait a minute, let me get you this. No, no. Um, the thing in the South, uh, that is one of the things that I love about it in a way is that there is this darkness that hangs over the South. Um, this like, you know, there's, there's this religious darkness. I, I, I don't know if you know what I mean, but there's this thing of where it's like this, you know, God is coming to destroy us. He's coming back. Mm-hmm. He's, Jesus is coming. He, he will pay, you know, do this. So there's like in certain parts of the state or in certain areas where you see that a lot, where there's, there's, there's a darkness that hangs over um, mm-hmm. a lot of the South. And it's something I actually appreciate in it, but it's like, I mean, is that, I don't know if you've, you yeah. know, know, maybe it's just me, but there is this like darkness that hangs over. I mean, it goes back to Faulkner, uh, Flannery O'Connor, especially, mm-hmm. um, where it's kind of this, there's a darkness that hangs over the South. And a lot of it is, doesn't necessarily have to do with any of our, you know, the slavery stuff. It's just this religious kind of thing, or I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I think it. Yeah, it, I think it feels like it comes back to sort of like a, a fear of, you know, the rapture, antichrist, that kind of stuff, and that you know if you don't behave, you know, shit is going down, oh, and yeah, that's yeah. what I feel like it is a lot of the times. It is, yeah, and they, you know, all those um, when you drive around. I mean, I guess they have them everywhere. I, I mean, I just, I just see them like in the south. There's, there's, there's like, you know. There's these road signs that are like Jesus is coming. Um, have you seen those? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And it's just kind of like I, I, it's like I don't know why they're telling me you know that. It's like well that's fine, but do you really think he's going to drive through you know downtown Salisbury and think that you're doing a good job? <laughs> you know? Right. I, I don't think he is. You know? <laughs> but it, you know, and it's like it's like don't you know. I, I mean, it's cool if you believe that, but the fact that somebody would actually go find one of those signs, you know the ones I'm talking about, right? mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and and go through the effort of putting it on their yard, it's like, why, 
that's great for you, but what, what does that mean for me? You mm-hmm. know? And I mean, it's the same thing as like putting up a, you know, I don't know, like a Ozzy Osbourne sign in front of my house. <laughs> I mean, it means that little to me. Right. You know? Yeah. And it's like, well, no, actually the Ozzy Osbourne sign means more, but it, <laughs> it just kind of like, I don't know. It's like, why are they doing that? Are they doing it to make themselves feel better? Yeah, I think it has something to do with, you know, the that Bible verse about, um, you know, if you uh, if you acknowledge me before men, I'll acknowledge you before the Father. And, you know, if you if you don't acknowledge me, you've lost everything, something like that. But even that one's that, that verse is taken completely out of context. But yeah. that's uh, usually what that comes from is the idea that it's like, see, see, I totally acknowledged you, Jesus. I am in the clear and it's like i I don't think he's that concerned about the sign in your yard no i don't think he'd like the sign thing honestly no i don't either (laughs) there was a oh my gosh you might have heard a comedian was like talking about this like the cross thing you know that everybody wears Mm -hmm. and i I know i just thought it was funny he's like do you really think if jesus comes back he wants to see a fucking cross yeah (laughs) (laughs) i heard that it was something like that would be what was it? I forgot who he referenced, but he's like, that would be like this guy coming back and seeing a shirt with an electric chair. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's, you know, I don't think it's sacrilegious, whatever we're talking about right now, but I mean, it's, it's, I think it's realistic that um, there is, you know, what do you, do you, do you, do you think that Jesus is coming back? Now, I do. Um, I don't think it's going to be some sort of an imminent type of a thing that people talk about now, like that we're living in the end days. I think shit can get way worse before anything like that happens. But I do believe that. But I don't believe it in terms of like a a rapture where the Christians are taken up and then there's the thousand year reign because I've, I've done some reading on that and that that's not necessarily biblical. And that's one of those kind of fear tactic things. Yeah. So I do believe in the return of Christ, but I don't think it's going to be for a very long time. What what does that look like though when he returns? Honestly, I guess in my head it ch- has changed over the years. It's uh right now, I guess it would be kind of like um you know, I I guess a, a sort of mellow sunny day cosmic event where it's like you know, well, here I am and you know, uh, is everybody ready to go? <laughs> you know, it used to be when I was younger, it was like, you know, the Christians were validated and all the non-believers are going straight to hell. Ha ha. And now it's more like, no, 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 no. I don't think that's how Jesus would work. I, that that seems a little spiteful. Um, So I, I, guess, I guess I have it more in my head that, yeah, he'll be, he'll be mellow and, you know, maybe take a question or two, you know, before before we all take uh, off. <laughs> I just thought of something. It's like maybe he won't actually return in any kind of physical form or any kind of thing that's identifiable, but there will be this great awakening. And like you said, the sun will come out and maybe something is going to occur that people accept that. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But it coming back in a physical form. I, you know, I don't know, but what you just said, though, that looking up and all of a sudden the universe makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess. I mean, I don't think it's, that'll happen, but I mean, maybe if, if, if he was coming back, I could see that. Mm-hmm. I could, that makes sense to me, you know, but, but the guy coming back, you know, with, I mean, I don't know. It, it could be like fucking, I don't know, like. Tupac or something. You know what I mean? Somebody's <laughs> coming back, I, you know. But it's like I could see that that there could be this awakening moment that would be the equivalent of him coming back to Earth. Hmm. You know? Yeah, and, and I think that would actually be really. Um, I think that'd be really connecting. Yeah. Is I guess the best way to put it because it wouldn't be like one of these things where people who didn't believe or oh no what have I done I think you know it'd be oh that'd be more powerful yeah yeah just because this whole oh okay it would there would be no denomination all it's just this is something that happened and those things that he stood for and the things that you know in my mind that I think he meant but there we go again but what I think he meant but. It, <laughs> That makes sense if there was all of a sudden this thing where people, oh, here we go. All right. 
if all of a sudden something happened where people realized that this hatred and this violence and prejudice mm-hmm. and thinking that other people are less than us somehow and valuing money over our own personal well-being, um, all of a sudden it, it becomes clear to us right. that that's, to me, that would be very similar or in my mind to Jesus returning. Because why would he have to show up as like this dude? Right, yeah, yeah. He's freaking Jesus, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he can come out whenever he wants. You know? He can come out rapping. Yeah. No, that, no, I dig that. That's cool. That's cool. That 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 sort of, uh, I can, I'm going to need to like meditate on that shit. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, thank does, you. Does that, I mean, does that, I mean, that, that makes sense to me, that that's something that could happen. I mean, or no, mm-hmm. no, it's something that I hope could happen. Right, right. In my lifetime, that people will just sort of go, okay, let's stop being dicks. Right. And you look <laughs> up and the sun comes out, or, you know, that feeling you get when you look at the ocean. Yeah. You know, where you feel, not a Christian, but when I look at the ocean, it's like I feel like it's the power. Mm-hmm. of the universe or the power of God or whatever. It's like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. this is fucking heavy, you know? Yeah. Uh, like everything is is awesome and yet everything's going to be okay kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like this is, everything's okay. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. Yeah. That's a cool concept. I need to think about that shit. Right, well, yeah. I, yeah, I'm... Did, this is the kind of stuff that rolls around in my head during the day. You know, I, I went from being a very sort of uh fundamentalist Baptist as a kid. And, um, uh, and I, I guess the best way to put it was someone, they put a, a saying on Facebook somewhere. It says something like if the, if the you of five years ago thinks the you of today is an eight, is a no, if the you of five years ago thinks the you of today is a heretic, that means you're growing spiritually. And that always kind of resonated with me, and so I, it it kind of helped me mellow out in terms of my fundamentalism and start really digging into scripture, digging into the concept of spirituality, how it connects to me being a Christian, and I don't know. This is yeah, this is the stuff. My my sense of God and Christ is very relaxed and mellow, and uh, yeah. and and it's it's been it's it's been a good uh, a good part of the journey. I've enjoyed this part. I like this. I like this conversation. Um, okay, here's another one. All right. If if he was to appear like in human form or whatever, he would be um, – okay, wait a minute. All right, let me think. Okay, if he did come in some kind of human form, he would be totally leaving out the majority of creation. Hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. Animals, trees – everything else if he came back and he's trying to save us as people but there's these other things that were created the animals Mm -hmm. and they may go oh it's a really neat person but then my cat would try to kill him (laughs) right (laughs) you know so it's like you know I mean he he just would my cat's a dick yeah (laughs) what what do you think about that what what happened do do you you feel like when you die what happens Uh, I feel like you when I I feel like when you die, you do go to heaven, but I don't think that it's what a lot of people traditionally think of. I I do think it's one of those things um, like you become a part of God's creation. Like there is no distinct form of like human or animal or any of that kind of stuff. It's like simply a, a soul, the thing that animates you. Uh, that makes yeah. you you, and that you get to go back and be a part of it. And I do believe it's a, a great place, but I think it's something that's beyond our comprehension. I, I When I was a kid, I used to think of it as like Disney World, but now I'm almost like, you know, I, I think it's one of those things you can't possibly conceive of what it would be to be in perfect harmony with God. And I think that that's for, and, and I think that's for every living creature. I, I, I know a lot of people will be like, oh, you know, animals... They don't have a soul. They're they're not going anywhere. And I don't believe that. I believe that everything has an essence or a soul, as it were, and that, you know, even something as small as a bug, you know, yes. when it dies, it does become a part of that again. Uh, back to the creator. That's what I think. 
that's what you just said is the Buddhist concept. It, uh, when, when people, you know, always talk about karma and things like that, it's like, well, that's karma. Like when somebody does something shit and he comes back to him, that is not actually the concept of Buddhist karma. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it is in a very shallow way, but the thing is, it's like, if you, you know, look out your window right now and there's a tree, right? Mm-hmm. And when we die, anything dies, it goes into the ground, we end up there, and then something grows out of us, mm-hmm. right? So it's this constant thing of growth, you know, death and rebirth. You mm-hmm. know? Death, not in a scary way, but um, how can I say it differently? Um, but being cessation and then, no, I guess it is rebirth. But uh, you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like these things keep going and going and going. And I think that that's where I may be able to sort of um, maybe, ah, oh, shit. Yeah, I mean, the Christianity thing is, but that's the other shit you guys do still bugs the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> But, but those kind of thoughts, and when I think about, you know, things that Jesus said and stuff like that, it's like, that kind of makes sense, because there is a certain, you know, continuity of things, mm-hmm. and that, uh, you know, who the fuck came up with animals don't have souls? I Yeah, I don't know. I That's one of those things I heard when I was a kid, you know, and uh, just this whole idea, and, uh, the, I think it was it, sort of a weird justification for, you know, eating meat, is, is what oh. I've gathered. You know the yeah. the idea that they're just here for us to do whatever you know that we're their playthings, and I I'm like yeah that's kind of fucked up. Oh, oh yeah, God gave us dominion. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, that part. Um, that's Old Testament stuff, dude. <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, but I, no, but I do. I mean, there's a connection. I mean, shit. No, but there is. I think there is a you know, sort of this this thing this this string of this you know not being hippie-ish or whatever, that does run through everything. And yeah. what any action that we commit um, will have ramifications down the line. You mm-hmm. know, this conversation we're having right now um, has made me think about some things, and those kind of thoughts are going to make it to where, not make it, but in my mind, I may be able to relate with um, fundamentalist christians like somehow i mean I don't, well no fuck that but it, <laughs> it, it, it may you know what i mean yeah I, I think i can see things you know you know maybe in a different way to understand you know what uh you know what all these things imply mm-hmm. there's no there's no necessary truth in any of this um there's implications that we can cling to or that we can you know we we, we can pick and choose we, yeah, we 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 cherry pick our lives, right? Mm-hmm. We can go through our lives and say that well, this one shitty thing I did was justified, or mm-hmm. this great thing I did was justified. But then it's like in the long run, it's like it doesn't really. What was the cause and effect of mm-hmm. that? And how is that going to lead us to what you said would be the return of Jesus, where we see that light, and where there's the return of whatever. How is it going to lead us towards that? And I think mm-hmm. that's what's important, maybe. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I mean, I think that you know, even if somebody doesn't necessarily believe that you know Christ as the Messiah and whatnot, that the idea of uh, taking the, the so many of the the teachings, which are you know, frankly, even removing any kind of spiritual connotation to it, are still good rules for just living as a person. You know, just trying to take care of each other and you yeah. know, making sure everybody's being uplifted. Yeah. Yeah, that, um, I don't know, yeah, that's some, that's something I practice too. When I was, um, um, I had problems with substance use and things like that in my life, and um, one of my sponsors uh, told me to do this. He said, I'm going to call you every day, and I want you to call me every day, and I want you to go out and just do something nice to somebody for no fucking reason. Mm. And I was like, seriously, motherfucker, <laughs> you know, and, and he would do that. He'd go, I don't care what it is. Mm-hmm. He's just do something nice to someone else. I'm like, fuck this mother. I don't need to do something nice. They didn't do shit nice for me. Mm-hmm. You know? But then he was like, he'd call me, he'd go, 
get up, go to the grocery store, and hold the door open for someone. Mm. And it was so hard for me to like go, you know. And now it's just like, you know, just second nature is what I do. Yeah. But I think that that kind of thinking is like, it is something that maybe, um, not that everybody needs to do is that most, I think a lot of people do that, but to do it consciously, not that we're going to get some kind of reward for it, but to do it because it is the right shit to do. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. but whether, okay. And then that's the other thing too, that gets to it. It's like, what's right and wrong, you know? Mm hmm. Maybe somebody's not fast enough to get in the door. We should slam it in their face and go, fuck you. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Turn into Bill Murray and Scrooge, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, didn't, you didn't make it. Sorry. Yeah. You know? <laughs> or the peanut allergy kid thing. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, it's, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you weren't supposed to live anyway, so fuck it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that Bill Burr? That was, uh... I forgot who that was. Yeah, but they were making that whole point. Oh, like, yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. It was Louis C.K. He's like, he did that thing, like, well, maybe or maybe not. He's like, well, oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that didn't happen when we were kids. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so I love that kind of stuff where, you know, it's like you're t- you're taking something that's, you know, very sacred to some other people and really just kind of taking a piss on it, you know? <laughs> and, and he's yeah. great that way. I mean, he, yeah. I mean, he still is, you know? I mean, all the, oh, yeah. Comedians, comedians are like... um. I don't know what to say. I think they're, they're probably some of our best teachers. Yeah, I would um, agree with that. Comedians that are really good observers are probably some of our best teachers that we have today. Um, not, you know, the preachers or any of that kind of shit or school teachers, but I think they, um, the good ones question our moral compass and they do it in a way that makes us think about things, but we can still come back to it and go, no, nah, I don't know if I believe that, you mm-hmm. know, because it, it's a joke. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're joking. So it's not like, a, you know, uh, it's, it's not scripture. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I think it helps to kind of let people, some other people kind of take it easy where they can right. go, Oh, I can laugh at myself and it's okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What do you, okay. That in mind, I'm, I'm interviewing you now. <laughs> Um, what does hell look like? You know, I'm not entirely sure I believe in a hell anymore. Um, I, yeah, I used to really believe in it, but at this point I'm, I guess the best way I could describe a hell is just a, oh no, oh shit. (laughs) At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Oh, there you are. Hey, Matt, you there? Yeah. I'm okay. The moment, my chin. Yeah. Oh no. That's good. Pos- that's, good pos- that's good podcast material. Right. right. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about. Uh, about hell yeah yeah um yeah and actually um i might have to we might have to call each other back in another day because i might have to hop off here in a second but uh, i'll answer your question though um my idea of hell is like um right now it's just more of a you're disconnected from god that there is no more interaction with god and i don't even know what that looks Uh like or means uh which is kind of why i'm like I'm not even really sure if it's like when I look in the, when I look in scripture and when I look at, uh, you know, like Christ, when I look at apologetics, you know, Christian philosophy and whatnot, there's, right. I haven't seen anything that really gives me the, the, the whole, you know, like a fire, you're going to be in eternal torment. The only thing I've really seen that I feel like is definitive is, it's like, it's a disconnect from God. But even that uh, almost seems like incompatible with the teachings of God and Jesus, that there would be a complete disconnect. Well, that, that comes from Dante's Inferno. Right, yeah. Um, I, I think, I mean, that whole concept. Um, I mean, there, I think there were certain illusions. I'd have to look it up, like in the Old Testament or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I think that was stuff that was created, you know, 
you know, through time and mythology. Um, oh, yeah, and uh, Paradise actually, Lost. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, because that should have occurred in, like, Greek. You know, it, it, well, shit, yeah, and everybody. Um, Norse, it, it occurred in all those mythologies. Mm -hmm. um, not that I'm saying that, you know, Christianity's mythology, but uh, mm -hmm. a lot of it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, seriously, it's like, it. Oh, now this we can we can converse on this another time. This is gonna be the longest fucking podcast I've ever done. <laughs> right. And, and, and I do want to get back to talking about music. My name is Matt Smith. I band's the Cowboy Spankers. Matt Smith, the Cowboy Spankers. <laughs> we'll be performing in um, fuck <laughs> March. March twelfth is our first show. It's gonna be great. You can come see it. And um, so yeah. So okay, that's done. But anyway. <laughs> let's, <laughs> Call me back, man. Uh, when you get, I, I should probably get off too. Okay. Yeah, love, yeah. I love this conversation. Let's make this like the longest fucking podcast you've ever had. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> so far it is. You're 100 percent correct. It absolutely is. <laughs> so this is good. I'm enjoying it, man. <laughs> well, yeah. See, that's and that's kind of what drives me crazy. Is like I, there's other things I have to get done, and so that's why I'm like I want to call you back because. I want it to have a, a, a logical end, not just a shit, I got to go, you know? <laughs> so, oh, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think I ended it, like, after we had this deep conversation, just going, anyhow, y'all, here's my show. Please right. Record. <laughs> <laughs> go find it, please. Come to the show. <laughs> Give me your money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but dude, yeah, yeah, call me back when you have time, or let me know when. Yeah. We'll reschedule, and... This is great. I love this conversation. Yeah, I did too, You're man. Me think, you know. Yeah, same here. Same here. I appreciate. You. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna have to go and uh, you know marinate on a few things while I'm uh, you know trying to reheat some leftovers. <laughs> me too. Me too. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a shit, smoke a cigarette. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, there you go. All right, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, Matt.
going to wrap up this episode of the Rock God Podcast. Make sure you go to heavy-vinyl.com for any kind of vinyl or cassette needs you may have. Also, you can check out any of the backlog of episodes that we have on Rock God at our website and also at any other platforms that may be hosting podcasts such as iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Make sure to go to all of our social media platforms on Instagram, Heavy Vinyl Records, at Facebook, Heavy Vinyl and Cassettes, and on Twitter, at Vinyl Heavy. Also, make sure you go to Matt Smith and the Cowboy Spankers Facebook page. And if you're in the Winston-Salem area on Thursday, March 12th, make sure to go by the Ramcat Club and check them out on their very first show. I'm David Locklear. Thanks for listening, and God bless. God bless.